Welcome to the Sustained Prosperity System call. This is Jeff Welch. I created the Sustained Prosperity System for one reason, and that was to help you win and you not lose. There's so many people that join a network marketing company, they don't have the wherewithal to know exactly what to do. They got excited and that's what we do. We build a lot on excitement and there's nothing wrong with excitement, especially if that excitement is enthusiasm and enthusiasm is a very contagious thing. And we're gonna be talking about that in just a few moments. And the training tonight is going to be going over the getting started training. If there's anything that's going to help you win in your business, it's to get your new prospects as soon as they have become a brand partner or become a distributor or representative in your company to help them get to that first step of success. People join your business for different reasons. Some join your business because they're just excited about the product. Some join your business because they're excited about plan B. When I was uh, building a company a few years ago and I built that organization to a very large organization, I had such fun being there for so many years in that one company. One of the first meetings that I had, I, I called a friend up and I said, I need you to meet me at my house. I wanna go over something with you. So he, he worked on my heating and air. He was a good friend of mine. I had known him and his family for a while. He was a great guy. I said, I want you to meet me at the house. So he came over to the house. I said, come out to the guest house. We want to, I want to talk to you privately. So I went out to the guest house and we walked in and, and we had a little chat. And I said, let me tell you something. His name was Randy. I said, Randy, I said, what do you have? What do you have to back you up if everything went away? What happens if you no longer have your heating and air business, your HVAC business? What's, that, what's gonna happen? if something happens to you physically or something happens to, to shut your business down, what if the economy goes sour and you, and you lose your, your business overnight, what do you have to back up your income? Do you have a plan B? What do you have there? Because, why did I ask him this? It was because that's where my mind was at. My story was there. I wanted a plan B. I wanted something that would back me up in case something happened to my business, to my income. I wanted to make sure that I had something substantial that was going to help carry me over just in case something happened to the economy or something happened to my business. And I had a lot of businesses at the time. And he said, you know, this was Randy's re response. He said, you know, I don't, I don't know. He said, if something happened to me, I'd lose everything I had. I wouldn't have anything. I would go under. It shocked a nerve in his mind. It caused him to think. When you're talking to people about the opportunity within your company, the first thing I would like to do is give you advice to be relative in your conversation to the person that you're speaking with. Don't talk about you. Don't talk about how important you are. Don't center your focus of your conversation around why you do what you do or what you are and how big of a rank you are and how excited you are about your product necessarily. That's not always what takes you to the top. What will cause you to win people more than anything else is to learn to be empathetic, learn to understand the feelings and the emotions of the person that you're communicating with, learn to listen, learn to communicate and relate. It's very important that you understand that network marketing is a relationship marketing business. It's not just a sales business. I wasn't trying to sell him a product. I wasn't trying to scam him on some kind of get rich quick scheme. I wasn't trying to take him into some kind of game. I was trying to convince him through my conversation with him because I cared about him. I knew what I was going through. I knew what I was feeling. I knew what I was uh, communicating to myself. I understood that what I needed, and that's what my why was, is to have a backup plan, a plan B, to have income coming in in case something happened. And then I immediately understood, in my mind, I immediately, under, immediately understood 
that there were other people around me that may just think the same way that I do. So I want you to hear that. Some people around you are going to think exactly like you do. So instead of trying to sell yourself, instead of trying to sell your product, instead of trying to sell all the you get rich quick concept, why not communicate and relate? Very important components on the getting started training here as you understand on building your business. The first people that are in your contact list and the contact connections that you have are the people who you know the most and the best, the people you have friendship with, the people you go on cruises with and vacations with and you invite over for dinner, the people that you go to the ball game and they're sitting next to you, the people that you're consistently reacting with and socializing with. Those people most likely are doing these things with you because they have a lot in common with you. And if you are sold on your opportunity and you are excited about your opportunity and you are dug into this, this mission of yours, chances are, if you just think about it, most of the people that you are in relationships with in a social environment are going to have a connection with the opportunity the same way that you would. So why do you, why do, you do what you do? What is your passion? Now, obviously, many people join a network marketing company because they're, someone approached them about a product, they were excited about a product, they started using the product, and then someone sponsored them because they told them, well, you can get the product, but you can also make money if you sell the product. Or if you build an organization like I do, and you've heard that before, right? I know you're excited about the product. There's two different ways to come into the business. You can either become a customer, or if you'd like to make money at it like I do, then you can become a distributor, brand partner, or a representative, whatever your company calls it. And then that person many times will respond, well, yeah, I'd like to make money. Absolutely, there's nothing wrong with that. Or they may respond, well, I would just like to be a customer. And customers are important. And when, they, and when those people join you as a customer, and then, then when they start referring people to you, that's when you can approach them with, why don't you join the business and let me show you how. Now that's important. Now, one of the things that I suggest if you have customers, I'm gonna go into a segue here about customer-based recruiting or customer-based prospecting. Once you have established your customer base, what are you doing to upgrade those customers to become brand partners in your organization? What is your activity? What is your method of working with your customers to see who in that customer list that are buying product from you every month, what are you doing to help them see the opportunity to be a brand partner in your business? Well, this is the way I would do it. You can do it a different way than I would do it. That's fine, but this is how I would do it. If I had a customer base, I would make sure that I keep up with those customers and I would send them a thank you letter. I would send them a thank you letter every month to say thank you for being my customer. And I would appreciate if you would give me a testimonial about the products. I would appreciate if you would share your enjoyment of the products with other people. And by the way, here is a few of my business cards. And I would make sure that that letter was sent to them in the mail with a stamp on it that said, thank you. This letter is a very important component. It's going to start, they're gonna start seeing that letter every month. Well, there's the letter from Jeff. There's the letter from whoever. And they're getting this letter, they're opening it up, and that letter is going to have those business cards in it that are gonna fall on their counter somewhere. And they're gonna start sharing your business for you. Now, as they start sharing your business, with other people, then that gives you the opportunity to talk to them. Because as those people start approaching you and becoming brand partners, they, they start becoming customers of yours, then you can have that conversation, that cup of coffee with them. 
You can meet them at the coffee shop. You can meet them in your living room. You can meet them in their home or at the country club, wherever it may be. And you can have that personal conversation and say, listen, I know that you're referring people to me. And obviously you enjoy the product. What I would like to do is share with you how that if you become a brand partner, you're not only helping yourself, but you're also helping me as well. You're not hurting me by you becoming the person that's in the business. In, fa in fact, you're helping me to expand my network of leaders. And I see you and I value the way that you share with others. I sure could use you on my team and I want to partner with you and I want to help you if you would consider this. Many times, in fact, a lot of times, you're gonna find these people will gladly upgrade to become a brand partner. Because when they start, after that conversation, they start referring more people to this, this in their mind, you've already planted that seed, that person could be making me money. That person could be helping me build my organization. Because you've also planted the seed in their mind as you have been referring people to me, and if I bring them into my business, in fact, some of those people that you sent to me have already started building their business, and some of them are already making money, and those people could be you and making you money as well. You need to understand this. Plant those seeds in their minds, and as they start referring more people to you, they're gonna think, I need to join the business maybe. And then you have another follow-up visit with them and it moves them forward. Now, this is all in upgrading them to becoming one of your partners, not just a customer. Customers are important. So in the steps of our program that we teach on our HSD, I want you to add in the steps of what you're doing that if you have a customer in your organization, one of the steps in your HSD system is to send them a thank you letter at least every month or every other month with a stack of about eight or nine business cards that they can share your business with someone else. And as they start delivering you leads, they start delivering you prospects, they start delivering you new customers and new brand partners, this gives you a great opportunity to help move them up to becoming your new brand partner. So that's just a segue of a lesson today in our getting started training. Why am I going over this? Well, let's go back to our original conversation when I was talking to Randy about plan B. Plan B meaning if something happens to your employment, this is one of my favorite conversations that I have and it's been going on for years. It never stops. What happens to you if what you're doing now goes away? You'll have to look for another job. You'll have to look for another employer. But what if that person's self-employed? They'll have to look at opening up a new business or going to work for someone else. I enjoy talking to people about the business opportunity. Many of you lead off, off with the product. I personally lead off with the business. I lead off with a business because that's how I relate. I relate to people based on the business. When someone asks me, what is your favorite product? My response is always the compensation plan. My response is always my why. Success causes you to be able to accomplish things with what you receive through the moving up of your income that happens on a residual basis. Now, if you want to build a strong organization, you will lead off with the business. You will lead off with the opportunity. I can guarantee you, when you talk to people out there in this world that we live in, there's more people out there that want to change their life financially than there are people who want to change anything else when it comes to your type of business or whatever it may be. Now, if you want to just build a big customer base, that's fine. You need to focus just on the product, 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 product. That's fine. You're going to make money. That's fine. But if you're going to expand a 
behavioral system of duplication that will build you a large organization, you must lead off with the business opportunity. Now, some of you are gonna give me a lot of grief over what I'm saying tonight. I'm gonna to get emails, I'm gonna get texts, I'm gonna get messages, and that's fine. I don't care. I understand what some of you are all about. I understand your loyalty to your product and I understand how crazy you are about what it will do for you. That's fine. That is not what I'm telling you though. Let me give you an example. I found that over the years that some people when they're in a business, especially a nutritional company or they're in a skincare company or they're in some kind of a company that, that causes you to get healthy by using their product, that's great. You're gonna have these people that are in your organization, they're studying every little ingredient. They're studying every herb and every rainforest story they possibly can come up with. And all these different things that this ingredient has done and this ingredient has done. And, and they stack up all the data and they study and they study and they study and they study. And before you know it, everyone they come in contact with, they're communicating with them, they're pulling over, hey, did you know that if you do this and you do this and this, ingredient does this and this will change this and you need to change that. Honestly, I don't want to do that. That's just not me. Okay. I'd rather talk to him about the business opportunity. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. It's very simple. You have those people who are extremely adamant about learning all the ingredients and all the different things that will do for you. I call these the little doctors and nurses of the team. These are the people who study everything and they talk about it all the time. And it takes them forever to convince someone that they need the product or they need this ingredient or they need this or that. When it takes me a lot less time to convince someone that they need a plan B or they need extra income because it's easy to relate to people about would you like to make extra money? Would you like to go in business with me? Would you like to be one of my partners? This is what I do. This is what I want to do with you. This is how I want to help you. This is how I want to coach you. As I'm going through that kind of conversation, I can win this many people. As they're going through that communication, the way they're doing it, like a little doctor and nurse, they're gonna win about this many people by the time I've won this many. Now, over a period of time, I'm duplicating because I'm duplicating with a system. I'm not duplicating with learn every ingredient, learn how to talk like a doctor or a nurse, learn how to heal every disease or cure every problem that everybody has with your product. I'm not teaching that. I'm teaching duplication. In our industry, in our profession, we have a lot of products and a lot of different companies, and a lot of these products help a lot of people. We know that. You can go to a nutritional company and they got this certain juice or they got these certain capsules or certain pills or certain whatever and you start taking these products and before you know it, a percentage of your people that surround you that's taking the products, they're all saying, oh wow, this, I feel so much better and I've lost so much weight and I'm doing this and with my life and oh my, I've started going to the gym, I've started eating better. Did you hear that part? That's what happens. When people get into a health and nutritional company, they not only start taking health and nutrition from their company, but they start eating better, they start working out, they start having a better healthy lifestyle, and it changes a lot of things around them, not just what the product's doing, but what their lifestyle is doing. Now, everyone has a different angle. I understand, but I need to let you understand one common denominator that you need to embed into your brain today. Everyone, everyone wants to do better financially. Everyone wants to be more secure. Everyone wants to have a better lifestyle. Everyone wants to have a better vacation. Everyone wants to have a better education for their children or their grandchildren. Everyone wants to have a better home or a better decoration in their home. Everyone wants to have a nicer car. Everyone wants to have more freedom that is given to them by financial success that is instigated by your behaviors. Now, I'm gonna read a quote in our system and I want you to write this down if you haven't downloaded 
if you haven't downloaded all the documents, I want you to write this down. Success is something achieved by specific behaviors which are proven to produce results. Now, let's not back away from what I've been saying. You're going to get results by talking about your product. And you're also gonna get results by talking about the business. Both are important. You're gonna get quicker and more broader responses by leading off with the business, but don't ignore your product line. Your product line is extremely important because without a quality product line, without a quality understanding of what your business is about, you really have no substantial gasoline within your engine. Now, let me explain that. This is a very important illustration, and I hope everyone gets this, because this will impact you in your heart and also in your mind. I want you to picture in your mind a car, and I've shared this illustration before, some of you may have heard it. Picture a car, an automobile. I want you to understand that the car represents your company. The car represents the company as a whole. The engine of the car represents the marketing plan, the compensation plan, the, the advertisement, and the marketing of your product, the information that is sent out, the things that drive the excitement about the product. The gasoline going into the car that runs the engine is your product, okay? Now remember, without the car, it could not hold the engine. Without the gasoline, the engine could not operate. Your product is extremely important. The gasoline is what causes the engine to run. But we're not talking about the most important components yet. The most important components that you can talk about here is the driver. You are the driver. Your passengers is your team, your organization. Without the driver, Without the team, there is no reason for the car. There's no reason for the gasoline. There's no reason for the engine. Everything has been created for you. And if you understand this concept, you're also gonna understand the concept that the most important component in this illustration is you. It's not the gasoline. It's not the engine, it's not the car, it's not all the bells and whistles and the shiny stuff. The most important component in this whole system of what we call the business model of direct sales is people, you and your team. If you understand this concept and you understand this mentality of understanding what this is all about, You'll feel what I'm feeling right now. You'll know what I'm knowing. You will never be a success in network marketing until you place the attention on the people you're talking to. So as you're building your organization, as you're reaching out to your team members that have not joined you yet, as you're prospecting, as you're communicating and relating, and you're empathetically touching base with your people, you will not understand the true meaning of success until you have befriended their true feelings. You need to understand where they're at. Where are they? Had a guy come by the house today that was here as a pest control guy, you know, was signing a contract to make sure they come in quarterly to spray for ants or anything else that might be around the house and um, put him on a quarterly contract. He works for a large pest control company here in Orlando, Florida. And as we were talking, we're talking about, he asked, what do you do? I said, well, let me explain what I do. And as I was explaining it, I could tell that he, understood that this was something that maybe he would like to do. And in this, I planted some seeds 
into his mind of how that, well, if something happened where you're at now, maybe you need a plan B. Maybe you need to build an income. Maybe you need to work for yourself eventually and to have no limits on what you could accomplish because the harder you dedicate yourself, the more you dedicate yourself and the more that you are trained and attached to people who will mentor you, who will mentor you to a level of success, you will get there. I was at a clothing store just before our webinar tonight as a men's warehouse, walked in, they had a, a special on shirts. You buy one, get one free, you know, special. They, that happens on an occasional basis. And I love to go into the men's warehouse. So I go into men's warehouse, the guy behind the counter, you know, he, he's from Australia, but he lives right here in Orlando working at the men's warehouse. And we'd had conversations before. He used to be in a network marketing company. He just had a brand new baby that was born just six weeks ago. And he's showing me the pictures of his child. Well, what should our conversation be about? Should it be about my ingredients in my product? Should it be about how effective my product is? Should it be how excited I am about how much money someone can make? Okay, let me share something with you. My conversation was about, wow, your child has, you know, it's a little baby, it's six weeks old. I said, your child, your beautiful baby has such great features, wow such a beautiful child. I'm communicating with him empathetically. I'm creating a relationship with his feelings because I'm caring. I'm doing it. Now, if you look at the three key factors of success that we mentioned in our getting started training, our getting started training, our three key factors of success are be active, not passive. Number two, have a strong desire. And number three, sincere enthusiasm. I want to capture your mind around the component of the third key, which is sincere enthusiasm. Now, I don't know who you are. I'm not looking at the list right now of all the different people who have logged into our conference. So quite a few people are on our conference here tonight from different countries throughout the United States as well. And as you're listening in, I'm not evaluating any particular person because I intentionally have not looked at the list of people because I don't want anyone to think that I'm talking specifically to you. Okay. I'm talking to you as a group of people who are learning how to apply sustained prosperity, systematic approach to building your success so that no one can take away your dream. Now, if you're going to build your dream, it can't be based on your ego. It can't be based on your ability. It can't be based on your charisma. It has to be based on a system. And if you're building it by a system, you're going to be, dupl be duplicating your activities. That's the first key. Be active and make sure your actions are duplicable. Action, traction, rank advancement, prosperous positioning. Action, traction, rank advancement, prosperous positioning. It's always in that order. And if we look at key factor number two, obviously it's a strong desire. And key factor number three, sincere enthusiasm. Let's pick on sincere enthusiasm. What's the first word? Sincere. Sincere. People can pick up on if you're sincere about what you do or if you're doing it because of desperation, or if you're doing it because you're just greedy. People can pick up on your sincerity, on the enjoyment of one thing, and that one thing is, are you sincere, and do you have sincere enthusiasm about helping other people? I can't overemphasize this enough. This is a business that you don't build based on the gasoline or the engine or the car. You build it on the enthusiasm of people. This entire lesson tonight is about people. Your sincere enthusiasm needs to be about how can I help someone? And what does this do? What does it do to benefit you? 
This is one of the only business models that you can find anywhere, network marketing, direct sales, multi-level marketing. I love all those terms. I'm not ashamed of any of them. It makes my living. It has for many years. And when I refer to it, I'm excited about it because it helps other people. And the more I help others, the more it helps me. In the typical business model, in the corporate world, the more you step on people, the higher up you go. In other types of business models, the harder you work, the higher up you go. In the business model of network marketing, the more that you help others, the higher up you go. Many people fail in network marketing because they join a business and that's all they do, they just join, they don't work it. We're teaching you how to do a step-by-step -step system of finding two new prospects each day, five days a week, that's 10 prospects every week, and following up with an HSD system, a higher source dynamic system, so that you don't lose contact with your prospects and you do it in such a way that you are getting a higher conversion rate, not because you're selling, but because you're caring. If you build your business off of caring with your steps and not selling with your steps, you're going to have a team of people you have built a strong relationship with that are gonna be a strong, core, committed team of loyalty that will never walk away from your leadership. If you're a leader and you value your ability to lead, you need to lead with dynamics that will cause people to understand that they're in a place where someone actively, not passively. If you're passive with building your business, you will find very quickly that those people who are serious about building their business that you have brought into your organization are going to pull away from you and start building strong away from you. They're gonna start building strong without you. They're gonna start building their own empire. They're gonna start training in their own way because you have let them go. You're focused on it like a hobby and you have superstars in your team that are gonna outrun you. But if you care for them, you're going to nurture them and you're going to put them on a system that works. You're going to give them the correct focus. You're going to give them the correct belief system and you're going to have the solutions so that they do not fall between the cracks and they don't lose. Because if people don't have a system to fall into, they're going to fall away. Now, very quickly, I want to go over strong desire because next week we're going to be going into some details that are actually going to blow your mind and I, I love next week it's going to be so fantastic but right now I want to go over some things with you that's going to help change your dynamics in your organization some of you have been opening up the emails you've been downloading the system the system works with a higher source dynamic concept I want to talk about a coffee shop meeting Okay, this is going to help you understand very quickly. A coffee shop meeting is gonna help you understand how to win people the correct way. Now, a coffee shop meeting is not every step, it's just one step. It's just one meeting, it's one appointment. You're gonna have so many other appointments as you're winning the people to your organization. But a coffee shop meeting, let me help you understand the dynamics of the higher source dynamics. Higher source dynamics is using a system or a tool system, the tools that your company provides and actions that are done the correct way that proves to the person that you're prospecting that they do not have to be a genius or they don't have to be a little doctor or nurse to win people if they join your team. If you come across like a doctor and nurse, if you come across like we talked about at the beginning of our call, like every ingredient and everything, and you want to cure the whole world, people are going to be afraid to join you because they're going to say, I can't do what you do. I can't talk about all those ingredients like you talk about those ingredients. And believe me, it took you a while before you could talk about it. You had to learn over a period of time. You got excited about it. You started studying about it. And before you knew it, you started repeating what someone else had said over and over and over about these ingredients. And you started winning people that way and winning people slowly. 
that is a contagious factor that will hurt you long term. The way that I'm teaching you is to teach people to win people so that when you're connecting with your prospect, that prospect in their mind is saying simply this, I can do that. I can do exactly what you do. That's, that's easy. If you can do that, I can do that. But if you get too complicated, they're gonna say, I can't do that. I don't want to do that. I don't wanna ever do that. That looks too hard. I don't wanna understand all those details. And every time they change a product, I'm gonna to have to learn more details. And every time they add a new product, I'm gonna to have to learn new ingredients. And every time they make a change, I'm gonna to have to get a new story. I'm gonna teach you how to use the higher source dynamic system so that when you win people, they're sitting across the table from you at the coffee shop saying, I can do that, no problem. If you can do it that easy, and you can get the word across to me and help me understand it that simply. I know I can do it too. Now let me share, share with you how we do that. Now this is just one step, the coffee shop meeting. In a coffee shop meeting, I can't go over all the details tonight. I need to dedicate one whole hour just talking to you about how that you do a coffee shop meeting. And if you're in Asia, believe me, there's a coffee shop every 100 feet or so because coffee shops are where people do business. In other countries as well, not just in Asia, but there's coffee shops everywhere. There's coffee shops everywhere right here in the United States, actually. And that's where you can do a lot of business here as well. Join me for some coffee. So let's use this as an example, and we'll try to finish this up before our hour is done. So listen to me. I'm the potential sponsor, and you're the prospect. You're the person I'm trying to win for my company, okay? If I'm trying to do that, the first thing that I need to understand is if I have knowledge here and that knowledge is coming out here, out of my mouth, I'm doing the wrong thing. I need to be able to point. I either need to have a smart device that I can scroll through and show a PowerPoint or show the information, if they ask a question, I need to be able to point to that answer. If I'm speaking the answer, I'm no longer using higher source dynamics. I'm using knowledge that I have obtained over a period of time, and it's causing that person to think, that's just too difficult. I don't want to do what you do. But if I'm pointing to the answer, it makes that person understand, oh, okay, sure, I understand. Now, second factor. I'm usually going to bring a partner with me. It's either a partner that's my downline, upline, someone within my team organization. Why? Because it's always best to go out by twos when you're meeting a prospect, not one-on-one. -on -one. I quit teaching one-on-ones years ago because one-on-one -on -one is selling. I don't want you to sell. I want you to relate. Okay? Relate. So, me and my partner are meeting with you at the coffee shop and we're having coffee. Now, if I'm the potential sponsor, I'm the one who's buying the coffee. I'm buying mine, I'm buying yours, and I'm buying my partner's coffee. Why? Because I'm the potential sponsor. That's the way it works. Why? Because I'm hosting the meeting. This is very important. You are buying the coffee if you are the potential sponsor. It is setting a statement. You need to do this every time. Never going to a, never go into a coffee meeting where you walk away and they're buying their coffee and you're buying yours. You're hosting. You're buying their coffee if they're the prospect. You're buying your partner's coffee if they're there to help you. If they are there to help you, and your prospect is there to potentially come in as one of your new brand partners, you are buying the coffee. Okay, I've reiterated that four times. Have you gotten it? I hope so, because this is a very important part. Now, if there's a question that your prospect has for you, how do you answer that? Well, first thing you don't do is you don't speak. 
You don't let the knowledge that you have here, even though you know the answer, go from here to here and you talk, start talking. That's no longer falling within the concept of the higher source dynamic system. If you do that, it's telling that person that they have to do that as well. And they don't want to know in their mind yet that they are learning that much. So that, that doesn't need to happen. Do not place your prospect under the pressure of, I can't do that. Okay. So either point to the answer on your smart device. If it's there, as you go online and answer their question very quickly, or your partner that is with you, you can look at them and you can say, well, what do you think the answer to that is? Or you can say to your prospect, well, that's a good question. And you turn to your partner and say, my partner's name is George. George, why don't you tell Susie what the answer to her question is? Because I know that you know this answer. Well, when I do this, I'm not answering it. I'm using a higher source dynamic, something other than myself to answer this question. You're consistently following the system of being the messenger, not the message. It's very important as you build your organization. As long as you're the messenger and the message, you are selling. If you're the messenger and not the message and you refer to the message as something you point to, something you give them, or someone else, they are the messenger, they're the message, you're the messenger. Now, understand the concept of the higher source dynamic. You're building your organization with new people that have never heard about your product. They don't understand the details about your product. They don't understand the dynamics about your product. And if you are speaking it from yourself, it makes them feel this too complicated. Now, I hope you have enjoyed the Sustained Prosperity Training. Don't make your prospecting complicated. Don't make your prospect feel it's complicated. Make it simple, keep it simple. This is how you win in the sustained prosperity system of building your organization. Thank you so much.